I think of all the many, many hundreds and thousands of quotes about teaching, probably my favourite comes from the great Albert Einstein. He said, I never teach my students. I only attempt to provide the conditions in which they can learn. And it's true, the old adage, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. So my dear friends, this one is in tribute to all of my students that I've ever taught. Well, when I say teach, of course I mean provided the conditions in which they can learn. Another fantastic one from Dr. Creepens Vault, the subreddit I set up so that you could share your stories with me and I could read them all for you. Well, my dear friends, it's time once again to sit back and relax with your favourite drink and listen. Subject, Johnson, Beverly, age 60. English teacher, experience, 38 years. 75 students per year, times 10 essays per year, equals 750 essays per year. 38 times 750 equals 28,500. Current status, 28,477 essays. 28,500 minus 28,477 equals 23 essays remaining. Yes, yes, just a few more, you old bat. You're almost there. Just 23 to go. Uh, she won't make it. I bet she'll croak before she gets there. Maybe she'll get hit by a bus on the way home. <laughs> Maybe a tree will fall on her. Maybe... Oh, shut up, Mudglot. You're just jealous. You haven't had one make it in a hundred years. Probably never will have another make it. Don't tell me to shut up, you smelly old sock. <sighs> I'll cut you off. Both of you shut up. If you lose count again, you will answer for it. Now, back to your eyepieces. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sorry, sir. Beverly Johnson stacked the pile of papers and placed it precisely in the centre of her desk, tapping the edges just so. She scanned the classroom and spotted a desk that was not exactly behind the one in front of it. She slid her chair back and stood up, grunting as she pushed against the armrests for balance. She limped towards the offending desk, nudged it back into line, and went to the door. She looked back at the stack on her desk and sighed. Ordinarily, she would bring the essays home and grade them for several more hours, but she was too tired. The fact was that she had been feeling tired during most of the year. Her 38th as an English teacher in West Hammock High School. At 60 years old, she'd been wondering how many years, if any, she had left in her before she retired. She turned off the lights and limped out of the door, fighting the objections of her arthritic knees. While Beverly was driving home, a cat ran across the road in front of her. She hesitated for a second before swerving to avoid hitting it. The next morning, Beverly arrived at the school at 7am, just as she had for each of her 38 years there. She hurried as best she could to her desk, picked up a red pen, and began reading the first essay in the stack. Before she made it through the first paragraph, she had crossed out two entire sentences and was shaking her head. By the time the first bell rang at 7.55, she had graded seven essays. Yes, yes, only sixteen more. God, you can finish them today. You can do it. You have to. You must. Gorblingit, are you sure your count is correct for this one? You know you cannot make another mistake. Oh, yes, sir, absolutely. I've checked and rechecked a thousand times. I'm sure this time... She's now at 28,484, which leaves her only 16 more essays to go to get to 28,500. Oh, like I said, I've checked my count a thousand times. Well, check a thousand more times. No mistakes. Not again. Oh, yes, sir. Beverly struggled to keep her eyes open throughout the day. 
Whenever she sat down, she felt herself falling asleep and had to stand up to try to keep awake. Her students noticed her fatigue, sensed that she was not as focused as usual, and took advantage. Cell phones appeared, texts were sent, and some students even committed the normally unforgivable sin of working on their math homework in Beverly's English classroom. By the end of the day, Beverly was reeling. At the final bell, she waved her students out of the room with no homework, an extreme rarity, and sagged into her chair. Her eyes closed. No, no, you old goat. Wake up, wake up. You have to finish. Wake up. <laughs> oh, shut up, mudglot. Beverly woke up two hours later. Something was wrong. She heard no sounds in the hall. The school seemed empty. She looked at the clock on the wall. Five o'clock. Beverly lurched to her feet, her eyes flashing around the room. Saw knees complaining, she hurried around the room, adjusting desks, cleaning the whiteboard, and placing several books in their proper locations on the shelves. Finally, having put the room in order, she leaned against her desk, panting, sweat dripping from her forehead. She looked at her watch and sighed. 5.30. She wanted, no, she needed to get out of here and go home. She grabbed her purse, flicked off the light, and reached for the doorknob. Then she paused and looked back at her desk. Yes, yes! Beverly sighed and went back to her desk grabbed the stack of essays, stuffed them into her purse, and hurried out of the room. Once she was home, she found herself too tired to cook anything, so she took some stale ham from her refrigerator, placed it between two dry slices of bread, and flopped onto her couch. She was asleep before she finished half of the sandwich. Three hours later, Beverly woke up. The house was dark and it took her several seconds to figure out where she was. Her head cleared, and she got up and turned on several lights. She glanced at her watch. Nine o'clock. Beverly stood still for several moments, her mind unfocused, and then her eyes opened wide. <gasps> the essays. She was falling behind. Beverly Johnson, teacher of the year ten times during her 38-year career, board-certified expert teacher, most students' favorite teacher every year, absolute institution at West Hammock High School. She always graded the essays on time. That was her thing, her source of pride, her claim to fame among the other English teachers. She always graded the essays faster than anyone else. She grabbed her purse from the kitchen table, pulled out a red pen, and sat down at the table. Every essay they grade takes a bit of their soul. Every essay they grade takes a bit of their soul. Every essay they grade takes a bit of their soul. Every... Three hours later, at midnight, Beverly leaned back in her chair and smiled. She had graded twelve essays, leaving her only four more in the stack. She felt back on track, back on schedule. She knew that no one, not even that young, pretty Ashley Timmons, could go through a stack of essays like she could. Still smiling, she crawled into bed, reading a few pages of the mad tryst of Sir Launcelot Canning before nodding off. The next morning, Beverly woke up at her normal 6am, drank a cup of coffee, made a small bowl of oatmeal with a single teaspoon of brown sugar, and drove to school. Plenty of time. She graded three more essays before the bell rang and students filed into class. Oh, good morning, everyone. What a great day to be alive. Please take out your copies of Macbeth and turn to page 79. Yes, yes, yes. Ooh, 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 yeah. Ooh. Only one more to go. Uh, stop bragging, Goldbliggit. Stop dancing. <laughs> oh, you're just jealous, Mugblot. 
Every essay they great takes a bit of their soul. Every essay they great takes a bit of their soul. <laughs> when the final bell rang, Beverly leaned back in the chair and let out a long, slow breath. She gazed around the room and took in all the symbols of her long career. Photographs, letters, dozens of ceramic apples, all received from grateful students over the years. Yes, she told herself. She had had a fine career. Maybe she would stick around a few years more, and then she would retire. She took out the stack of essays and lifted the final one, the last essay she had to grade. She grinned when she saw it was written by Lee Carunia. He was one of her favorite students, and he was one of the very best writers in the senior class that year. She knew it would be excellent, and suddenly... A radical thought came to her. What if I don't bother reading it and just give him an A? What would be the harm? I already know it's an A paper. What would be the harm? No, no! You hag, you vile cockroach, you old witch, you damn... Ha <laughs> well, well, well. So gall it looks like she might not make it after all. Hot glass. <laughs> no. Ah. Silence. Sir, he deserved it. He did. I won't apologize for it. Gormligat. He may have provoked you, but was all that necessary? His ears. His head. Didn't you get carried away this time? Well, maybe a bit. Anyway, back to your eyepiece. This may still go well. Oh, yes, sir. Beverly thought for another minute and then chuckled, shaking her head. She picked up a red pen. She realized she was simply incapable of skipping the essay. She didn't know if it was duty, or responsibility, or even instinct, but she knew she had to grade it. She looked down at the final essay and began reading. Oh, yes! <laughs> Five minutes later, Beverly wrote, 100%. Great job, Lee. Excellent transition between paragraphs two and three on the essay. She placed the essay on the stack of others, and her head dropped forward, slamming against her desk. Ah, congratulations, Gorblingit. Well done. Now, let's see what you can do with Beverly. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. I have some fun planned for this one, that's for sure. Beverly sat straight up, ignoring the blood dripping from her forehead. She stood up, grabbed her purse, and walked straight out of the door of her classroom, leaving the lights on and the door open. On the drive home, she approached a man riding a bicycle ahead of her. She steered directly behind the rider and matched his speed, her front bumper only a few feet from the cyclist. She inched a bit closer to him and then pressed on the car's horn. She really leaned on it, keeping the horn's blast going for a full ten seconds. The cyclist jerked in his seat. His hands almost came off the handlebar, and his front wheel whipped back and forth. He pulled hard on his brakes and flipped over the front of his bike, crashing onto the sidewalk. Beverly stomped on the gas pedal and roared down the street, waving a middle finger outside the window at the man bleeding on the sidewalk. She pulled into her driveway, got out, and walked into the house. She dropped her purse on the floor of the dark kitchen. Beverly stood there, all night, not moving. Her eyes open, until the sun began to creep over the horizon. Beverly then picked up her purse, turned and left the room, and got back into the car. She sped down the street in the direction of school, blowing through three red lights in a row. 
At the fourth light, she blinked several times and slowed to a stop. She sat there, breathing deeply as the light turned green. A blue pickup came up behind her, and its driver, a young man, had to slam on his brakes to avoid hitting Beverly's car. He honked his horn and lowered his window to yell when Beverly's driver's side door opened. She got out of the car, holding her yellow umbrella in her right hand. Beverly approached the truck, swung the umbrella over her head, and smashed it on the truck's hood, leaving a gouge in the paint. Then she held the umbrella in front of her, pointing it as if it were a sword. You son of a bitch! Who do you think you are, honking at me like that? You son of a... <laughs> Nicely done. She got back in the car and sped away from the intersection. The driver of the truck, 17-year-old Neil Parker, captain of the football team at West Hammock High School, sat there with his mouth open. Beverly pulled into the parking lot at school and glanced at her watch. 6.30 a.m., half an hour earlier than she normally arrived. Plenty of time, plenty of time, she said. She entered the classroom and sat at her desk. She looked down at the stack of essays and flipped through the pages. After a few seconds, she clenched her teeth and slapped her hand on the desk. All these years, and the same errors every day. Passive voice, dangling modifiers, comma splices, plagiarism. I write comment after comment. I lecture, I give them homework, and they don't care. They never learn. She reached in her desk drawer and took out a small container of whiteout. She picked up Lee Karunia's perfect A plus paper and used the whiteout to erase the 100%. She picked up her red pen and went to work. By the time the first bell rang, she had gone through half the papers. On each one, she had circled every possible error she could find. She had made every grade an F. On each, she had scrawled comments including terrible handwriting. Because I can't read this. Don't waste my time with such garbage. You will never succeed at anything. Zero points. The students came in much quieter than usual. Neil Parker having already spread the story of the Umbrella Assault. Get out some paper. Time for a pub quiz. That day, she gave her students a ridiculous amount of homework, barely suppressing a smirk as they moaned at the nearly impossible prospect of reading a hundred pages of Billy Budd that night. When the final bell rang, Beverly grabbed her purse and rushed out the door. She pushed through the crowded hallway elbowing several students out of her way. Miss Johnson? Miss Johnson, can I have a moment with you? Beverly heard the voice of Principal Robinson behind her, but ignored him and continued out to her car. Two hours later, the following call was recorded at West Hammock Police Station. West Hammock Police? Yes, sir. This is Captain Clark from the security police unit over at the base. Something strange just happened here, and we need you to come down and pick someone up. Okay, Captain. Tell me what happened. Well, our gate guards called me and said an old lady pulled up and demanded they let her on the base. Okay. Uh, then what happened? They asked her if she had a military ID, and when she said she didn't, they told her she couldn't get on the base. Apparently, then she got belligerent and demanded they let her in. She started screaming about paying her taxes and said they had to, that it was her right as a United States citizen. Oh, and then they asked her why she wanted to come on the base. Well, what did she say? That was the really strange thing. She said she needed to take a tank, and she wanted us to load it with ammunition. Load it? <laughs> I know. Well, the guard started to snicker, and she attacked him. She scratched him across the face and drew blood. She almost got him in the eye. So they grabbed her, 
and put her in handcuffs. They're holding her in the office, and she just sits there chanting, 28,500. Oh, she won't say anything else. <laughs> Very nice job with this one, Gorblicket. What do you have planned for her next? Oh, sir, I'm just getting started with Miss Beverly. This is going to be fun. <laughs> So, those little things that drive teachers mad, eh? They all build up and build up. But do you ever wonder if someone's counting them? Waiting for that moment when you'll snap? Well, maybe this is a cautionary tale. Don't mess with your teachers. <laughs> okay, Especially any of my students who are listening. That's right, they've found out that I do this, some of them. And they might well be listening to this. If you did, get on with your homework. Ah! <laughs> Well, that's all for one day, but I, of course, will be back again with you very, very soon. You have a safe one out there, and see you again on Friday. Until then, sweet dreams and bye-bye. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook, come chat with me on Twitter, listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud, drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt, and, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, looking forward to seeing you all again real soon, so... Come check me out, okay? <laughs>